morning, guys. We're off for the day. Oh man, this is getting worse. That's really rough. We're off to uh, get the day started. Got to change an axle on my car. Got to find food. Got to drive eight hours. Um, and there's some other stuff to be done in between. Look at that. There's still some. Uh, there's still some grass in the wheel there. going off track but uh this one wheel drive isn't going to get me very far in this car so we got to get that axle changed out and then i'm worried about not having a spare for that one so i probably got to order another axle and have it shipped and have a knuckle shipped and uh yeah it's not super easy having a jzx on this trip being able to find parts for it but it's sick it is a really really cold morning here in oklahoma and this car sounds like a diesel when I started. It reminds me of my uh, Cummins truck. Gotta get a little bit of gas. Makes all the right noises to sound just like a diesel. Some clicks and clacks. <clears throat> really low RPM. Until you rev it up, it just sounds like a car. This is now turning into an issue. I'm, I'm, I, I've got the straw collection, and Mikey figured out. That, uh, that I, I, I'm somewhat of a straw collector. And so he keeps getting me these straws from different places we go. And mind you, these are some good straws. Like this, this straw from Sonic, this is unparalleled, man. Oh my God. This like, like. That's a fatty. I, I can't open it. But this is like, like a ridiculously large straw. Um, which is cool, right? I'm gonna try it out for sure. But the problem is, like I keep putting them in my door pocket and they fall out every time I open the door. Um, which is now a problem. So I guess they're going in the glove box. We got room in there. We're running out of room in there too. Another issue I've come across is this has started leaking a little bit. I don't know exactly where it's leaking from. I haven't put any time or effort into figuring this out because it hasn't really been an issue yet. But there's little drips coming around there and I think it might be coming right out of the, uh, the front of the master cylinder. This one is not a Willwood. Um, oh yeah, I think it's just, oh, yep. <laughs> it just... Yeah, yeah, that's definitely an issue. But it still locks up, so I'm not gonna deal with that right now. We got enough other issues on the table. But that boot is full of juice. There it is. So ironically, we came to a parking lot to fix our car for Drift Week, and we found some other guys that are on Rocky Mountain Race Week that appear to be fixing their truck in the same parking lot. Uh, Jesse thinks we should fight them. I'm thinking we should probably make friends with them. But at the same time, like, they're kind of in our spot. Like, we need that spot to change our axle. So it's kind of like this territorial rival thing. Like, bro, can you get out of our spot? Take your drag radial somewhere else. What if he's changing an axle? Probably got the same problem. So it happens when you have a lot of grip breaking axles. Mike's over there making friends. Mike and Kelly have made friends with our with our rivals. I don't know what we do about this. Is that a is that a parachute on the back of the trailer? Slowing down? That's pretty rad. I'm joking. All jokes aside, pretty rad. Are you guys going to make friends too? I have no friends. Fraternizing with the enemies. What'd you say, Jesse? I have no friends. There you go, man. Cold out there, hell. Woo. What are you doing? <clears throat> I was trying to affect my mood. I feel worse now. <laughs> the Aaron of uh, Drag Week is probably really upset. <laughs> Whoever the Aaron of Drag Week is, is really upset that they're following around with the trailer. They're cheating. You guys can't cheat. 
surprised they didn't bring you them. You just sleep in your Chevrolet loves. <laughs> here and get some stuff done so we're out of the bitter cold. Alright Kelly, give me the rundown of what it's like driving a hundred miles with one axle. It was 100 miles? I don't know. It was Dude, a lot of miles. I felt every second of it. I didn't think it was 100 miles, but it sure, oh my gosh. You know when like you're in a sketchy car and the steering is, is messed up in some way and you're like, oh, I got to get this to the shop that's five miles away and you're scared? It's like that. But the whole way here, you give it gas, it like, I don't know. I think I explained it earlier. Uh, it's like a piece of driftwood with a, uh, with a propeller on the back that you can't <laughs> control. So you're like, you're like, I want to go this way. And it's like, okay, okay, maybe. And you give it gas and it, bam, to the left. And you let off and bam, to the right. And Oklahoma roads suck. So it's like, it's like driving a piece of driftwood on a really, <laughs> really nasty, wavy river. Yeah. Well, we made it. Yeah. We made it. Let's I'm change a, this I'm, axle out. I'm a good driver. I'm That's a good driver. Good driver, man. <laughs> Gosh. All right, let's do this. All right, so we stopped by M-Spec. We're going to take the tools out, find the axle, and do it as quick as possible because we still got a seven hour drive to get to Houston today. Um, let's see, it is 341. So we'll see how long it takes us to do this axle. It's Casey. What's up, dude? How you doing, dude? Okay. M-Spec performance, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay, I, want, I have a few questions for oh, you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what? I've known Casey since like 2010-ish. I would think that's I don't right. know, I, I think that's time. fair. Like 10 years, at least 10 years. We went, we went like four one more time battles at PPIR in like 2012. So my wheel came off, my, yeah, all my wheel studs broke off yeah. and then they went to the judges like, and I they asked I, Casey, I, I like, Casey, I, what do you want to do? He's like, I want to run the battle. Yeah. Cause he could have just won, but he's like, nah, I want to run it. Yeah, I think, it we, went, I think we went like four times. Yeah, it was good. No, so, this guy for a long time. Yeah. That's all, I'm back to work. Hot cool, man. all right, all right. All right. Now this is, uh, which one of you guys' car? This is Dan's. Dan's? Yep. And this is yours? Mine. Okay, yep. I had questions on this okay. because I know a little bit about anti-lag and stuff and I was curious. I see you have some ports running into your exhaust manifold no, here. They, these are just the wastegates. So okay, yeah, this okay. doesn't have any anti-lag in it. Um, uh, actually, now our our current tuner. I'm driving, so I don't want to be tuning. And Steve is now our current tuner. He's also our 
old tuner's fantastic. Uh, he actually built this exhaust manifold like four years ago. Okay. And it's been it's been minty ever since. So cool, cool. Um, but yeah, no, no anti lag, just waste skates. Um, we did um, anti lag with the throttle body at one point. Oh. Um, which okay. isn't as effective as like fresh air or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we actually ended up hurting a turbo, and then we just kind of swore it off, and you know now we have nitrous in the cars and stuff. So okay. Yeah. What's up with the uh, the nitrous? What are you running with that? Like, is it just uh, straight through the engine to get more power yeah, and spool turbos? It's a direct port dry setup. Um, so okay. it's, I mean, my car sprays all the way through. Really? Uh, yeah. So from, from zero uh, from to like, full throttle. So like, you know, like 80% uh, throttle and above. Okay. And then like, like 3000 RPM and up. Okay, um, cool. I was going to say, yeah, what are you idling with no, nitrous no, 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 blown no, no, through no, it? No, no, no. It sprays all the way through. Okay. So. Okay. So, so tell me, you guys build, you guys build these from scratch. Yep. Yeah, These the are body. all the whole body. The whole body. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. Doors? These are metal. Uh, we're making doors. I'll show you that in a minute. But okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we've got front bumper, rear bumper. They're not on the cars right now, but the fenders, the skirts, the quarter panels. Ooh. Um, yeah, we make we make all of it. Ooh, dang, dude, this is nuts. What's uh, what's the fuel setup on this thing? Uh, they are fuel safe, uh, custom fuel safe tanks. Okay. Um, with Aeromotive brushless pumps in them. Okay. Uh, and they've just got like a four door baffle inside, so we don't have like a surge tank or lift pump. Nothing. Or just the one pump. Just that monster. Just that one pump. Big old pump. Yep. And oh, so, no. like, you know, versus like three pumps for like a lift pump and two pressure pumps, like that'd be like you. 60 amps of electricity. We're down to like 20. That's the fuel overflow. That's a fuel overflow. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you mean fuel so overflow? We're dry brake fuel fill systems. Okay, okay. Uh, so, those are like. You know, we push the tank in and the fuel uh -huh. is way up here, uh -huh. so it kind of like pressurizes the tank a little bit. Okay. Um, and so it's to make sure we're full, we need to see fluid coming out. You know, we don't have a gauge on these or anything. Um, and so it'll fill up into that tank and you can see it start to spray into the tank and know that you're full and disconnect and then it gives a little capacity for overfill. And then it okay. just kind of sucks it back in the tank as you idle and run through the fuel. Really? Yeah. So. Okay. And I, how I did those this year. We, we, before we just had a tube and we'd have to catch the fuel in an extra container. No kidding. Yeah, but the problem with that is it could siphon because it was down low. So oh, yeah, yeah. You'd just be blunt. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. So, so, okay. We, so we came up with this, and, okay. uh, and both cars have it. It works, it works great. Okay, now uh, how much, uh, what What do you think this uh, holds, and how long does it last? Uh, eight gallons. Eight gallons. Um, I would say at like a typical like FD track, we still fill up every two runs. Um, every two runs? Yeah, yeah, every two runs we just go ahead and fill the car off. We like the weight in the car. We, okay. Um, and you know, if we get weighed, like these cars are real close to the minimum weights. So, Ooh, so you so, gotta have yeah, a full so tank. We fill, we fill the tank up every two runs. Um, but uh, like fun days and stuff, um, I've done probably six to eight laps on a tank before. Really? Gas and this, these are on E? These are on ethanol, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool, cool. It's Ignite, so it's like a oh, E90 with, some, oh, okay, with yeah. some race gas mixed to it. Yeah, okay, so. okay. What's the, do you know what race gas, like 106, 110? I think it's 114. 114, so a lot of people are running that now. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's uh let's step over. We I, I see something I want to talk about here. Yeah. I want to know why this hairy, hairy over fender is the way it is. Uh, okay, and so what's going a, on? I have, I have a new one. Um, of course, you know, we just popped out a new one. Yeah, but, you guys just, oh, uh, this is nothing. We'll just yeah, make yeah. another so, one. So this is like, I'm trying this carbon for the first time for this okay. year. This um, is, uh, what do you call this? This, like uh, hex? hex car okay. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's yeah. neat. You don't notice it that much. This has got like the gold pinstripes through it. Yeah. We've ran this a couple of years. Um, but we tried this for the first time this year. And honestly, it's not as strong. It looks cool, but it's not as strong as some of the other materials. Okay. What's, um, uh, what's the, the benefit to having a super strong fender when they, they kind of need to, to break it in a sense like ripping okay and like folding oh oh that's that's something most people yeah. wouldn't do yeah, with yeah. their so, car so yeah you can <laughs> front fenders whatever but, all of it all yeah. of it okay um so that is like that's the strength i'm talking about it stays together okay. this uh i had actually i did have a tire d lamb at like Ooh. 80 miles an hour yeah so that that's sucks. that's what that is but. okay it actually looked great. It held up through all this. I mean, you can see this is still in one piece, whereas this is smashed. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if this was yeah. fiberglass, it would all be trash. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have uh, quite a lot of experience with fiberglass <laughs> blowing apart. Um, so I see you've got nasty, like, four-inch wide intercoolers. Yeah. What what turbo is this? It's a 6062. Okay. And then, oh, this is a small throttle Seven, body. 72 mil. Okay. Uh, we're Even that car, we run these deep motors. Like 90. Yeah, dude. Yeah, they they yeah. kind of suck. Yeah. So but... We, but I found I found a lot, um, you know, through the years of Jay Z stuff. Yeah. That like most of the time, if you're like on a 90 mil throttle body and you're like 
sub a thousand, you'll find that like when you're tuning it above a certain throttle percentage, it's flat. You don't gain any more mm -hmm. horsepower, mm -hmm. and that's because you've reached the maximum flow. You of should that. see my my uh, uh, VE map. Yeah, so straight I'm, up, I'm it, sure. comes up sure. it comes up, and then it just yep. flat. And that's and that's because you're letting you have no more restrictions in the intake manifold. The motor is breathing the best it can. So if I do this, then I get um, I can still get to where I tapers off a little bit so I know I'm using okay. everything but I have more density in my throttle signal so when I'm oh, playing with it it's you got more bam bam more instead still, of us yeah, we go like 25% sure. exactly, it's exactly, full throttle exactly I can use the whole throttle range. okay cool so, yeah. cool and then you guys are running part shop yeah all max? part shop max okay what do you see you um so this is link because it's in the prospect okay. series uh but the rest of the electronics are all ECU master so really yeah they're PDMs yeah PDM switch panel kill switch okay. GPS IMU okay. unit all of it. They're these dash. are these are S thir fourteen point fives. Point nines. Point nines. Front and rear. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cool. And then they're both rear mount radiator. Yep. Same fuel systems yep. on both. This one's running nitrous. Yes. That one's running. That nitrous? one's pumped for nitrous. We're not currently running it. Oh, we okay. do, it's all there. The whole, all the solenoids, everything's there. We just would have to put it in. You took first place at Utah's uh, Prospect Series, correct? Qualifying. 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 That's yeah, right. Yeah. I Robert. Went out, I went out in uh, eight against Robert Thorne. Another high five. Yeah. Bam, yeah. dude. Good job. Good job. Yeah, you guys are a, killing it. That was a fun event. RTS quick change? Yep. Cool. Both cars? Yep. yep. Cool, man. G-Force four speeds in both of them. Okay. Um, what, uh, what drive shafts? Or not uh, drive shafts. Uh, Axles. Uh, we make the axles. You yeah, make we'll, the axles. We call some companies and order the components we want and put them together. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. I was curious. A lot of people run like drive shaft shop sure, or sure. crazy expensive sure. stuff. Um, but if you're you, able, you save a little bit of money when you order the pieces and put it together yourself. Okay. Um, we use like RCV uh, uh, hubs or um, CVs, physical CVs or okay. RCV. Cool. Um, and then uh, the axle shafts are Mark Williams. So you can just call in and tell them what you want and sizes and lengths and all that stuff and all right yeah yeah that's so, pretty nasty yeah okay um we've been same same set of axles on his car for four years now never had a failure what yeah. and, and he, it's clutch kicks and and e-brakes 50 to the wheels we've never had a problem yeah. What are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. 950 yeah. to the wheels and you've had the same axles in for four, four years. years. Yeah. What about you? Uh, so on kill, this thing makes 760, 800 torque. Oh my God. Yeah. That's for, three, three, four with the nitrous and the smaller turbo. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything in particular you'd like to show off? Uh, I mean, we did everything here, literally. Okay. So I, I mean, if wiring, welding, um, rear like, tube frame, everything. everything. Uh, our buddy Nick did the paint work. So it literally went here. From here, it got painted, came back, and then we finished it. So. Do you guys make this dash? Uh, we didn't make this dash. This is actually a monster. Oh my service gosh. Dash. What's up with the basketball? Uh, there's a basketball in there somewhere. A little really? Yeah. Oh, you, okay. Yeah, pull, okay. Up to the, pull up to the line at FD and give it to um, Max and let him try and make some shots at the cool, line and stuff. Cool, cool. Sopa. Yeah, Hell yeah. yeah. So, just, cool. Just to take your mind off. A little, Dang, little less stress. What, uh, what trains? Uh, the the G-Force, the four-speed. Okay, yeah, GS cool. Force. Is that still H-Pattern? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I think that's everything I have on these cars. These are super, super well set up. Thank you. You guys kill it. Thank you. Stay up in the next year. Are you guys competing again? Yeah, of course. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Cool. We'll, well, then we will uh, we'll talk to you again later, okay? Sounds good. All right, so here's the, here's the bad axle. It's straight blown up on the outside. You can see where the ball, right there, there's a bulge where the ball has uh, come through the cage. And that spins, but you see the axle itself does not spin. It's just spinning on the boot. So, I'm glad I brought spares, but I'm probably gonna try and order another spares, so uh, if this one blows up, we'll have something else to replace it with. But like, like Kelly brought up, I can't believe it wasn't making noise while we drove the 100 miles to get here. Just straight up, like, quiet. Just spinning, just doing his thing. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get all this pulled out. And, uh, Pop it out with the uh, the one we brought. Mm. Want some pepper on your pasta or some cheese? Or... What's going on here, dude? Look at that. Is it is it always like that? Oh, it's blown out right there. It is blown out. Ooh, what is going? Hmm. <laughs> okay. That looks like a tough axle too. Yeah. I mean, it looks. <laughs> Yeah. Look, you can be deceiving. All you're doing is looking at the outside. You're pretty on the outside and ugly on the inside. You're right. Just like, I'm not gonna say. So one of the axles they sent us was not even the right axle. Luckily it's not the side we need yet. 
<laughs> and then uh, this one came with a bag of grease and I was like, hey, let's check and make sure they actually greased it. And there's some grease in there, but definitely not enough grease. So I don't fully understand why they would partially grease it, but not fully grease it. It's a cheap uh, half job, full smile. Yeah. I'm going to agree with you on that one. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Really get it in there, you know? It's like, a, it's like greasing a trailer bearing. <laughs> what? You've never done a trailer bearing? I absolutely have. You this gotta is push it in. <laughs> you gotta push the grease in there. Alright. It's not gonna grease itself. Yeah. I mean it might. Mm. Excellent half hour. You good? No. You look beat, bro. Did the car get to you? What happened? Yeah. Did did you punch it? What happened? I just tightened some bolts. <laughs> Let's grab the tow place and just see where we're at in the rear after welding that knuckle together. Uh, someone in one of my videos told me that uh, the tail light's out, and then Jesse's like, hey, the tail light's out. So I finally took, took it apart. Check it out. Oh. I think oh. It's, just the, it's just the bulb. I don't know where we're, we're going to find a bulb like this. What bulb is this? What would you say about it? Your freak is over. Because <laughs> of a bulb? Done. Pack it in, boys. Get the tickets hold. Get on the Greyhound. This thing's, this thing's <laughs> low on oil. You can't even drive at home. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. Salvage title this thing. It's dead. Dual filament so I can slip yeah. in. A slip in dual filament. Wow, Casey slip. makes these, bro. Slip I don't make these. <laughs> Casey makes everything. Casey, make me a light bulb. You should probably find look, a light bulb. look, look. They, they, got, they got light bulbs everywhere. Just plug one of those in there? Yeah, one of, one of them there are little bulbs. Look away. Look away. Oh god. Wait a minute, what's going on here? You getting naked? Done. Alright, alright. The brakes. Oh man, I was gonna come zoom in on your face. Boop. Oh man, do I miss my old Toyotas. My 8.6 would do this. Definitely a Toyota thing. Doing it again. America. You're welcome.
Oh man, what a drive. That was a long late night drive. We made it to Will's house. Um, I'm not gonna do any more filming because it's late, I'm tired. And Will has like at least a hundred. What are they called? Oh, at least a hundred SC300s. They're everywhere. They're like, uh, it's like rabbits, they're multiplying at his place. But uh, he's got some really cool cars. Maybe I'll show you those tomorrow. But that's it for tonight. Catch you guys in the next one.